Hi, I'm Sandra Chuma. Welcome to Ndini. As you know, Ndini is a platform where we share the stories of inspiring, trailblazing and groundbreaking women of African descent. And today I have an incredible guest joining me. Her name is Rungano Nyoni and she is screening her film at the Toronto International Film Festival. Well, that is among the many screenings that she's done of this amazing film. And I'm so thrilled to have her join us today. Welcome, Rungano. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Now let's talk about the film. What is the film? What is it about? It's called I'm Not a Witch and it's about uh, a little girl um, who's accused of, of being a witch, of witchcraft, and then she's sent to live in a witch camp. Well, she's told to decide between being a goat or being a witch and she decides to be a witch and she lives in a witch camp with other witches. How did you come up with that idea? Where did the story come from? Oh God, it's really, I always find this question difficult to answer because it's, it's just, I think it, it developed from, you know, short stories and then I'd watched several documentaries and read a lot about witch camps in, in different parts of Africa I was fascinated with and I used to think I would do that one day, I was like, that'd be a great idea for a film or something. And then at one point I thought, actually this could be my film and, and I kind of mixed all these ideas I was working with in the witch camp and and yeah, and that's how it came about. But it was many years of writing different versions. Nindo shoma ano shu. Tatuishi boko afuma. Papa no machi rukuli we no mba. Oku salapo kubembushi ati mo kubendoshi. Ngawa salapo kubembushi. So there's been a lot of buzz about this film. I know you've showed it a number of festivals and it's just received a lot of critical acclaim. Was what did you expect when you made the film? Ah. Oh. I don't think I thought about what to expect. I didn't expect anything. I just, I think it's so, because you're in a mode of trying to make a film. So your expectations, firstly, are always set very low because everyone you pitch to, because you know, it's a whole process of making a film before you actually make it. So when you're pitching, I remember pitching for the project at various markets and they were like, oh, it's in Zambia, is it in English? I said, no, and they're like, oh, um, yeah, you're probably not gonna get a lot of money for that and it might probably not be made and, no one's interested. So I was just focusing on trying to raise the finance for it. And then once it is, it's like a miracle, you know, and then you start making the film. So I didn't, ex I think making it was probably the, the, the most of my expectations. And then I met those and, and everything else has been, and I forget because I make short films and short films, you're quite protected. So you make it and then you see if people like it, mm -hmm. but then feature films, people, descend on it, people review it. Like I didn't, I, I didn't figure this out. I, did, I really didn't figure it out. So short films you can get away with, you, you know, you could, there's no judgment really. Mm -hmm. So you just show it and it's quite pure and then audience see it, they, they clap, then you go home. But feature films is a whole different thing. So I'm learning a lot as I go along. So yeah, no expectations, but they've exceeded what, anything I could have ever expected for. What's it been like being in the theaters? I know you said that you were at the screening yesterday. Mm -hmm. What's it been like being in the theaters and watching people responding to your work on a big screen? Uh, scary. Um, but what I like, what, what give, brings me a lot of joy is that they, they, they laughed. This is my biggest fear is that they don't get it. And they were laughing at bits I even didn't expect. And I, and I made it for people to, to laugh in part. So that's... I enjoyed that bit, but you get to, I, I'm, I'm really tense and awkward when I screen my films, that's why I told you I'm not seeing it tonight, because it's just a my heart attack. So um, so that was nice, that was a good response actually, and people tend to be positive, they're very curious. Yeah, it's, 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 um, it's been enjoyable, more, more so than I thought it would be. And why, what drew you to telling a story? So as you said, you know, when you went to pitch the story, they were like, eh, Zambian story, mm -hmm. not in English. Why, you could have made a, mm -hmm. an English story about something, you know, more quote unquote palatable. Mm -hmm. What made you want to make this film, which was challenging to make? 
Oh, I tried to think about a film in England that was more palatable. I spent ages trying to think of an idea, and I was like, this would be just an easier way route to make a first film. But in the end, you know, your heart wants what the heart wants, and and I'm, I guess, closer to to Zambia, and and you know, I go there every year, and I stay there for months, and and I had, and that kind of ignites your imagination. So. So I wanted to do this film, actually. I remember when I knew this is the type of film I wanted to make was when I was staying in... in, uh, in I usually stay at my grandmother's farm when I go to Zambia, and there were lots of witch accusations happening in the local area. So I found that really fascinating and how people get very worked up about it. And it's in the city. We, my, mother's far, my grandmother's farm is not. It's in Lusaka, the capital city. Mm-hmm. So I found that really fascinating, and it made me kind of think about why that was happening more and more and why it's always women so it made me it got me thinking a lot and then I got all angry and stuff and I started writing I'm like yeah it's hard being a woman and then <laughs> and yeah so I got it usually comes from like an emotion I got really angry and emotional and then it kind of started helping me shape my idea a bit more so you said it's hard being a woman I know you're being tongue-in-cheek there but is it hard being a woman filmmaker uh, it depends where you are. So in Zambia, it's not hard being a woman filmmaker because it, I think one of the contradictions in Zambia is that women have never really had a... Pro, it would, not in the same in the West in terms of like barriers to entry to careers and this thing of a, a woman having a career. It's been my grandmother, my mother. It's, it's, it's nothing new to us. So it's normal okay. for us to have careers and pursue them in every everything there's nothing limited you know so like women have been in the army in Zambia before women I think in America were Mm -hmm. and and police force and it you know it's it's in that terms it's it's ahead I don't feel like a woman filmmaker there I feel like a woman filmmaker when I leave Zambia though then you realize it's a problem a big problem the only thing that works against me in Zambia is youth people think of me as youthful so it's hard to get yourself heard and have a voice of authority because they think you're just young and you don't know anything. But yeah, I, I definitely feel it for sure. Especially when I made my first feature, I felt it more than any other time. You feel the barriers, you feel what people are talking about and how difficult it is. And I, I grew up in an idea that there are no... I was very lucky because my mother never... I never grew up thinking about my color or or my sex or my you know I, I didn't think about it. Mm-hmm. So um, and then you, when you get older, you start realizing oh there are but oh my god this is really weird. And if I'd thought about it, I would not have chosen this profession at all because uh, it's hard. So it's only when I get older that I realize yes there is there are limits there are barriers genuine barriers. It's not just a bunch of people thinking you know, talking, it's genuinely there and it's hard and it's different and it's frustrating. And then we've got a lot of work to do to redress the the balance. What do you think? Well, like, what are some of the things that you, you say it's very hard, like you said youth and, and just being taken seriously. Like, what are some of the other challenges that you face as a woman and as a filmmaker? I think it's because it's just like with anything else, any other industry, it's a boys club, yeah. especially it's a white boys club. And my my man friend, <laughs> my husband, is also a director and he's white. I always call him golden boy. He's white male director. So he's like the opposite of me. And he sees a difference. <laughs> and he said, oh my God, the way you experience filmmaking, I would never... I, I couldn't put up with wow. it. And he's, he's witnessed it all the time. So we discussed this yeah. uh, all the time about the differences. And I've been in meetings with him. And the way he speaks, I could never get away with speaking the way he speaks at all. And he doesn't understand why I don't just, like, you know, shout at people. I said, no, then people are going to think I'm an angry black woman. I have to be very diplomatic. I have to say things. Not, I have to watch how I deliver things. Because things, in my context, coming from me... Is, is not as palatable because there's some people but there's some people that are super cool that you can tell that you can speak to and be very direct and blunt yeah. the others that you know it's going to be a problem you know it straight away mm-hmm. that okay I have to find a way of shaping how I think and all my decisions which is a shame not all of them I've learned a lot at the beginning of the process the decisions I made which were really hard you think you don't just make the decision of a film you're thinking okay what is I'm a woman and I'm black if I make this decision which is horrible 
I, I stand to lose this and will I get a career? Will I get this and will I do that? And which is so unfair, it's such a burden because you can't just make a decision for a film. And so I decided in the end to do it, even if I come across as difficult, if I come across as angry, upset, whatever, I'm fighting for the film and I have to make that decision. And that was the hardest thing I had to do because I'm always so self-conscious about how I come across. You try to be like Mother Teresa or something and it just doesn't work, it does protest me too much. So once I, I decided to not think of myself as, and not think about being a black woman and just think about my film, I literally rolled up my sleeves and said, right, this is what we're going to do. So that was a hard thing, but I did it and, yeah. and I'm, I'm happy I did it. When did you know you wanted to be a filmmaker? Was uh, it, yeah. Yeah, were you going to say? No, was it something like, were you young and you're like, I want to make films, or when did you know? I didn't know it when I was young. I know other filmmakers do, and they're like, I was born with a camera in my hand. I wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't that. It was, it was a slow burn. And I think that, but the movie that really changed my idea of cinema was I watched uh, La Pianiste by uh, Michelle Haneke. Do you know this film? No, I don't. It's an, it's an incredible film. It's, a, it's about a, a white bourgeoisie woman. And it's, it's, a, it's a world that's opposite to mine. She's a piano teacher she teaches the classics it's it's but somehow I remember watching this film and thinking if thinking she was me and thinking this is my life but she's totally messed up like she cuts herself she she's um, stunted but somehow I watched this film and I thought my god it's me if, if someone can make me feel that for this woman yeah uh, that's powerful that's incredible and and I've been obsessed with that film and how he does that, how he engages people in that way and how cinema engages people. And I've been trying to, to do the same thing or, or copy that same feeling I had. That was a really, and I wanted to be like Isabel Pear. She's, she's the main character. I wanted to be like her. And then, um, yeah, so it was that, that was the, and I was quite, I was in my, uni in university when, when that happened. And did you study film or? Uh, no. I'm self-taught. Oh. I taught myself how to write and, and thingy, and uh, it sounds great, but it's horrible. <laughs> I, I tried to go to film school, but I got rejected the one time, so I thought I'll just teach myself. And I did. But I learned how to act. I went to this, I did a master's in acting. I did a degree in business. Mm -hmm. I did a master's in acting, that's how I learned. And I used to just pick up the camera, write some scripts, and work with actors, and I started that way. Yeah. And so what, what, what advice would you give to someone who is like, watching your film and like you said, you know, there was a film that influenced you and they watch your film, they're like, I want to do that. Where would they start? Oh, how did I start? Uh, I started researching a lot. A lot of my film score is actually from reading books about filmmakers and now there's stuff online that you can get a lot of access to information. And I think... Um, I just looked at that and there's a lot of inf a wealth of information out there and there's really no excuse. You can come from anywhere and learn and you don't need expensive equipment. You just pick up the camera. And I, but I think it's, so you can't teach someone to have the desire for because no one could have told me not to become a filmmaker. And I didn't even know what it was. I just knew I wanted to make it and do it. And, I, and, the, and then I would ask a lot of questions from people who were filmmakers and I made sure I, put, I entered in so many schemes, any workshops, Anything that was happening, I would go and watch it and, and be part of it. I would be an assistant. I would do so many things to, to just put myself in that world. And I'd be in on these like online forums, reading scripts, watching films. Um, and yeah, you have to have that desire for it. And I think you, yeah, that the, it's just go for it and apply for everything. I used to Google every week something like, Funding for short films, scheme for short films, the, all this, and they used to look at fest, film festivals, seeing if there's anything I could be involved in. I volunteered for film festivals. I just immersed myself in it once I made that decision. So it's just immersing yourself in it. And, and try and go to film school, but if you don't get into film school, it's not the, the end of the world. The best people did not get into film school, such as myself. <laughs> no, Paul Thomas Anderson, well, he got into film school, he just left after a couple of weeks, but... Yeah, some, uh, so film school is not necessarily the way to go, but if you want to, if you need that process to become a filmmaker, that's fine too. But there's lots of things available. Yeah. 
And how, so let's talk about the, the making of the film. Like, how did you start? Where, where was it filmed, first of all? It was filmed in Zambia. In South All of it was filmed in, in Zambia? Yes, yeah, yeah. And so how did you go about, like, because that's, you, you don't live 100% of the time in Zambia, mm -hmm. so there's the logistics. How, what was your process? How long did it take for you to film it? Uh, it was six weeks plus three days. It was... Um, to be precise. Yes, three, day, <laughs> three days extra. Um, we got a crew from, because it's money from UK, we got a crew, all the heads of departments had to be from Britain. And we got some crew from South Africa because Zambia lacks re film infrastructure. It's early, it's happening. But you, we don't have formal training in film. There, there's some schools, it's, it's slowly changing, but it's very difficult to find crew, qualified crew. But we found people, we found lots of people there. And then it was six weeks pre-production. Um, and we, I didn't have money in January and by June I had all the money, all the budget and we just started straight away and we were trying to make it for the rainy season so it was a really tough, and it started raining after, well, a little bit during the shoot but after the shoot then rainy season started yeah. so yeah, it was six weeks pre-production, six weeks production and it was tough, it was a tough, tough shoot it's, it's very tough, so In what way, like what, what was the most challenging thing that you faced? Um, you're getting a crew from who don't know the, the climate in Zambia, and then you had, don't have an infrastructure, that, so they have to climatize to that, climatize of a different way of, of making, approaching films. It's that, and also you're trying to build, as well as do the film, you're trying to build that infrastructure as you go mm -hmm. along. So getting permits, people didn't know if we needed permits, that we had to get press passes, and we're like, but we're not press. And, and uh, it was a lot of a hustle and, and also, um, yeah, filming itself is always challenging under the best circumstances. So um, it was that and then just coordinating and organizing everything, especially bringing the crew from South Africa, we had to get where to fly and I had a DOP from Colombia. I had a whole mix, and then my sound was from France, so coordinating all that and the money was from France and Britain and coordinating all these factions and yeah. and then the rush oh it was it was it was tough but we did it and we had to get yeah we had to fly to south africa to get the uh, equipment and the equipment had to drive they had to drive all the way these two guys drove all the way from south africa to zambia um on the road and then they got stuck in zambia for like uh, a day on the border and we had to like figure out a different way of, yeah it was a lot of it's logistics was the biggest biggest what about your your cast? Like, where did you cut? Where did you find all your characters? Um, a mixture of, of different places. I think the person we legitimately cast uh, cast was a little girl, and the guy who plays a government official. Everyone else is non professionals, so is a little girl. And sometimes it's street casting. Sometimes it's random. Sometimes I called like cousins and relatives because you know you got someone and they didn't turn up, so you just call your cousin. It was really hickledy pickledy <laughs> sometimes. I don't know how we did it. When I look at it now, I'm like, I would, that should never do that. Um, and it was a lot of stuff, because it's a big cast, and the women who make up, there were 31 women we had, mm -hmm. and we got them from different parts of Zambia, because I'm Bemba, my tribe is Bemba, and I, but I didn't want it to be about just Bembas. Okay. So we had to make sure that was diverse, so we got different, you know, Tonga, Nyanja, Bemba, and, and I made that a, a rule, and then they looked at, you know, cast different people from from different age. and then the women were all the over the age of 70 the oldest was like 90 wow three and uh yeah th that was a very heavy casting process when i think about it it was really tough and then the girl we cast oh, nearly a thousand girls to try and find her a thousand and nearly a thousand yeah wow little girls wow so she's special what was it about her that would you knew she was the one i didn't know at the beginning uh my dop knew more than me because yeah he 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 said no she's perfect and i was like i don't know but he was looking at her from an image he's like yeah she looks she her her face her everything and the lighting on her face is great and i was like mm, i don't know and then it took me a while it took me about a week until i realized that no she's she's perfect i don't know she has a quiet confidence. You realize she's very quiet. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing that worried me. I was like, she's very, very quiet, and I'm not sure if she's confident enough. But then you realize that she's processing 
she's just very subdued she processes everything you give her something and she gets it and then she does it and she's she was always in the space she wasn't so the other kids would look at the camera for instance and I just had to give her a note don't look at the camera and she didn't and she was totally in and in the process and the I in the last stage of auditioning I brought the women to audition the last two girls it was between her and another girl and then I asked them to choose who do you think is the little girl and everyone picked her because she was so incredible it was obvious by then I knew oh, it yeah and what about the editing? So you filmed it, had all the challenges, then you went into the edit room. How long did the editing take? Oh, forever. <laughs> we went to France to edit it in Paris. It was challenging because, uh, because it was just very challenging. It's, di it's a difficult film to get tonally and everything. It was, it was a challenging film for everything because we're trying to do something that we can't quite describe. We're trying to do a sort of a Zambian fairy tale. So the tone was very, it's like it's sort of comical, but you're talking about something serious. So the tone was a very difficult thing to try and harness. So the editing was probably the most tricky. I thought, okay, the difficult thing is over. I love editing. Then I'm like, I hate editing. I'm still here editing. It was weeks. I think we was supposed to have 16 weeks and I went over by about eight weeks. I feel like I edited forever. No, I'm, yeah, I only finished like a month ago editing the film. I locked it, yeah, a month ago. And yeah, so that was, that was tricky. So we went to France and then we edited some of it in the UK as well, towards the end. We fine-tuned it there. And what did you want, so when you locked the film and released it into the world, mm -hmm. what did you want people's response to be or what did you hope people would respond, how people would respond to it? The only requirement is I wanted them to at least find the bits I find funny, funny. I wanted them to understand Zambian humor. I wanted <laughs> to deliver this film, a very serious subject, in a way that's not always... Because, you know, I wanted to find a way of people engaging with the film without turning to kind of like... I call it like African porn or poverty porn or like trying to... Or making it too earnest and going for the sympathy thing. I, I, I'm trying to find a different way of shaping and something that represents Zambia but not talking about Zambia in a literal sense. So trying to mimic the way our humour, which I think for Western audiences can be quite cruel, but Zambian humour is amazing. So I wanted to kind of give them our world of how we see it. And I was scared that it wouldn't respond to it because I had a lot of problems in script writing with people trying to understand what I was trying to do mm -hmm. and also making the film trying to understand what to do and what's appropriate and inappropriate. And I remember early screenings of the film, people were apologizing for laughing. I'm so sorry, it's funny. I'm like, yeah, it's supposed to be funny, like laugh. And so that's the only thing I wanted actually, that people kind of laugh and get engaged that way and engage in the film somehow. Yeah. And so you've just, finished like literally you locked a month ago yeah yeah so are you thinking about what's next uh yeah I get asked that a lot I I should do but I, <laughs> I, I am thinking I'm looking I'm definitely looking I just haven't settled an idea and this is the only thing I've been working for for many years I didn't have a plan b because um I just didn't I'm not organized and and so I have to now rethink what it is I, I have to do so I'm thinking I'm just thinking what I'm gonna do do you, do you see yourself doing, so you've made short films, you've made a feature film, do you find yourself leaning more, like which is the more enjoyable experience for you or are they different? <laughs> None of the above. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all fun, filmmaking is fun. Uh, oh no, they're all different. The nice thing about short is you really, um, feature films are very different to shorts, it's two different ways of filmmaking. The good thing about a short is that it's like very, it's so intimate and, and the way I work, which is kind of organically, you can, you can be flexible in a short, but a feature film is like a whole, it's a machine. It's like a machine you have to bring and then you have to crank it up. And then it, it, that's, 
the different way of thinking about it. And then you have to, you can lose yourself very quickly in a feature film. And now I realize I'm much more forgiving because before I used to watch films, like, oh my God, that's rubbish. And you're like, no, this is hard. Because <laughs> you have to really catch where did you, the character go before and you're not shooting it in sequence. That makes it difficult. And then things go wrong easily, like they do all the time. And in short films, you can manage it. You know what went wrong, so you know how to fix it. But sometimes in a feature film, you can forget the thing that went wrong because it was last week. Mm -hmm. And now you're shooting the sequence to that and it can the elf thing it's 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 a it's it's a it's a it's an animal to yeah it's a it's a different animal so i don't really you know think of feature versus short i just think what interests me and engage me and i'm that's what i'm looking for it could be any format so what is it that brings you the most joy it doesn't necessarily have to be about film or filmmaking but what oh, brings you the most joy what brings a, a smile question. to your face uh, oh no, I'm in deep. Film is like everything. It's like it's taken over. So there's nothing else besides that. But what gives me joy is watching really good films. I watched The Square the other week. That was. Have you seen it? No, I've not. I've, I've heard it. so many people it's say it. So funny. It's so good. That brought me joy. I was like so happy for for ages after, and I'm still happy. It's such a good film. It re It's hilarious, and it's like I'm super jealous, half jealous. How amazing it is. <laughs> But also, like, really proud. It's it's a great film. So watching a good film brings me joy. I tried to do Carpentry. That did not bring me joy. Because <laughs> so, I'm trying to find other things. I tried surfing as well. That did not, definitely did not bring me any joy. So I think I'm just, I'm just a filmmaker. You're a filmmaker. That's all that makes me happy. Yeah. What does your family, what did your family think when you told them this was the path you wanted to follow? I didn't really announce it. I, no, I did actually. I remember having a meeting. With, I remember having a meeting with my mom and my dad. I said, I want to become a filmmaker. I'm giving myself two years to make it. And if I don't make it, I'm going to pick another profession. And they were like, okay. But no, I did not make it in two years. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, no, no. I, 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 my family just, I'm the first A filmmaker and first sort of artist in my family. Everyone does really normal like really great jobs and uh and so they didn't quite understand it they only understood it when i remember my short film and i got into cnn that's when people were like that's great because you know this is how you've arrived yeah you've arrived <laughs> and they're like oh that's great before we thought you were wasting your time Rangano, until we saw you on cnn i'm like what why did you tell me you thought I was wasting my time? So they don't, they don't have a concept of it. But I invited my parents on set on this film, so they got it. It was great inviting them because it's like, it's really impressive. Film sets are really impressive if you've never been there. Right. So you have all the trucks, the camera, the team. They're like, oh, God, no, it's really big. It's, you know, so, um, yeah, they, they've always been supportive, I think. My mom has always been supportive. She's just always a believer that whatever you do pursue it with every inch of yourself of your being and pursue it it's like with anything if i decide to be a cleaner do it and do it well and be a good cleaner and and so that's what she encouraged from for my filmmaking so yeah would you say that that's the best advice or what is the best advice you've ever been given hmm that's a good question the best advice i've been given jeez maybe that is but my mom never gave, she doesn't like do rally and cry. She never said do, yeah, she, she does in a different way. But it is like, um, I think it's like indirect advice through watching her. I think the best thing I can do is adv advice that I gave indirect, she gave me in indirectly was this idea of not having any boundaries. I've never, I've been quite spoiled. I've never, not spot, she didn't give me stuff, but it was this idea of not being aware of boundaries, of not, that you can achieve anything at all. You can achieve anything. There's no reason for you not to. And my mom's really chill. She's really like um, a ninja with that. She just, if I come with like, oh my God, and they did this, she goes, it's yours, just take it. So just take it, just go and take it. it belongs to you. So. I always had this idea that I'm entitled to whatever it is I want and I think that was important to do because if I really knew the reality I probably wouldn't have gotten out of bed. <laughs> no, I wouldn't have. Yeah. So I know you have to race for a, a screening so 
thank you so much. I'm going to let you go, but I have one more question to ask you. Actually, I have two more questions. Okay. I'm interested to know, I, in my language, mm -hmm. I know what your name means. What does it mean? What does your name mean? What does your name mean in your language? Mine means fairy tale or story. That's the same. Yeah. But it's, Zimb it's a Zimbabwean Zim name. It's, yeah. You're from Zimbabwe. Yes. Yeah, I'm from my name is Zimbabwe. It's a Shona name. Oh, how did you end up with a Zimbabwean name and yet you're Zambian? <sighs> <Story>. <laughs> I'm always, this is the thing. I'm always never anything, aren't I? Like, even my name, like, because in Zambia you don't get, you get given your tribal name. So, but I didn't get that because my, my, in, for some reason my father named me and actually my name is in memory of my grandmother who was Shona. Ah. And because I didn't get to meet her before uh, she died, they named me Rungano to tell me the story of my grandmother. So that was the the idea, and she yeah, she was Shona, so they gave me a Shona name. But in Zambia, they can't say R, so they go Lungano. So I totally, it was always a misfit, like all the time, like, you know? Uh, yeah, so, but I love my name. Now I really love it, because before I'm like, why can't I just have a Zambian name, like Chileshe or Wadia, like everyone else? But no, it's a... Uh, it's a sh I'm proud of my, my Shauna name. And it's almost, it was almost very foreboding because yes. you're a storyteller. Yes, I'm a storyteller, hello. Ah. That's why you have to be careful what you name your kids. <laughs> At least we believe that now, because be careful what you name. If you're going for Mercedes, <laughs> you're gonna know, you're gonna know <laughs> Um, well, maybe she'll end up with a Mercedes, yeah, right? Yeah, maybe. That's what, that you need. <laughs> or like Mercedes and everything else, or rich, or have everything. That would be a nice thing, yeah. So. Um, okay, so speaking about Shona, and Shona being my mother tongue, um, our project is called Ndini, and Ndini is a Shona word that means I am. And, um, you know, I've heard it said so many times that I am, and then whatever you say after I am really shapes your destiny. Almost like a name shapes your destiny. Yeah. And so, finish the sentence for me, please, Rungano. I am. You. Oh, I am. I am. I am. I am Rungano, and I'm happy. There's nothing else to say, I think. I am happy now, today, and it's the rare, so, yeah. What and why? Like, what is I it? I don't know. I'm enjoying. Not it. that it's a bad no, thing. No, That's no, a no, wonderful no, thing. No, I'm really enjoying because before I've been so caught up in you know filmmaking and all the the stuff that you do, but I I was really encouraged today. First, I met like other black filmmakers or people in in the thing, and I met uh, Cameron Bailey. I just came back from meeting oh. him, and he was really in inspiring. And I think you need people like that because you feel very alone a lot when you're a filmmaker. And meeting people like you, that's why I really wanted to come and and I was trying to work to come. I know, know if, this was like, a challenge, come. scheduling <laughs> this interview. Because um, it, it's just important to have these people that um, that say lovely things to you. They don't, they're not massaging your ego, but right. to have someone in the field encourage you and know you're not alone. It's such a wonderful thing. I mean, you, I don't know if they understand just how much of an effect that has a profound effect and and before I came I, I wasn't I was just fine but now I'm today I'm, I have to say I'm, I'm really happy and if if anyone knows me they know that that's not me I'm always depressed <laughs> and angry but no today I'm happy so yeah I wanted to say that and I think Toronto really great really great festival so yeah yeah so I'm so glad we caught you on a good day I know right <laughs> And I don't believe that for one second. Having spent some time with you, I don't true, believe that you're true. angry, Matt. I don't it's believe true. that. Filmmakers <laughs> are. You do. You're just angry and depressed and alone and broke. So, yeah, it's, it's your go-to emotion. But today, yeah, I'm super, I'm super happy. Thank you. No, I'm thank glad you. that we could be part of your day. <laughs> and uh, yeah. go get them at your screening. Excited. I'm coming to the screening tonight, so I'm excited okay. to see the film. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much for no. making the time to speak to us. And uh, continued success. Can't wait to see what the next project is. Yes. Okay. I'll keep you. I'll keep in touch. Please.